All right, so last week I hit you guys with a huge curveball. I kind of told you I'm changing the channel up. So this week is going to be the start of the new channel changes that we're going to be doing. It's going to be the start of the new project. I uh, went over in last week's video, the new project. If you didn't watch it, I'll link the video right here. You can go check it out. But we're going to be working on a 97 Nissan hard body. We're going to turn this into a show truck eventually. This is going to be a very long build. We just started it. Pulled the motor last week. I've got the block and the head sent to a local machine shop. They've got to rebore it. I think they've got to bore it 30 over. They're going to do the head work on it, get everything right. And then when we get it back, we're going to paint the engine and start from the, you know, assemble the whole engine and get everything. I want to try to put as many new parts and stuff on it as possible. Old pump, starter, stuff like that. And then we're going to throw it in here. But before that, while we're waiting on the engine to come in, I really wanted to test a paint color. So. If you've seen the video last week, I went over how I wanted to do the paint and I'm gonna attempt a fake patina on this truck. And I really want it to look like, almost like an old school truck, even though this is a hard body. I've never seen a Nissan hard body done this way. I wanna do a turquoise blue. I'll show you the color that we're gonna do. I'm gonna attempt it on this fender today. I wanna tape the truck off mask off just this fender, get it sanded down, and then we're gonna attempt the stages. So whenever you patina or a faux tina, fake patina, whatever you wanna call it, you do it in layers. So we're gonna layer some tractor paint on, uh, one color and then another color, and then I've got the turquoise color I'll show you in a minute that we're gonna put on top. Once it's dried, we're gonna sand it down in spots, revealing the primer and the black and stuff like that up under it. So it's gonna be fun. I actually cleaned up the valve cover. Check that out. I stuck that in a glass blaster this week and it cleaned up pretty good. So we're gonna paint this. I'm not sure what color yet. Uh, I may wait till the engine's here and we decide on the full color on the engine, but I wanna do something really cool with the valve cover. Anyway, we're gonna be jumping around. Let's get this thing masked off. I'm gonna go change clothes first, get the door masked off and get to putting some paint on a vehicle with a paintbrush. So let's get to it. Just go ahead and unplug them and get them out of the way. And I'm pretty sure this truck has been wrecked in this corner before. Because on the inside and right in here, you can see where it's got a lot of black paint. And you can see where they've kind of bent places back into shape with a pair of pliers at one point. So I guarantee you, at one part of this hard body's life, it's had a wreck right here in the corner and it's been repaired. We should be able to get to that. I wonder if I need to take the bumper off. Hmm. That grill's not even clipped in right there where it's supposed to be. I think that, that grill comes off pretty easy. You just turn these little locks. Let me do that. I think on these hard bodies, they got these little plastic squares and you just turn them around. Just like that. This is just some old cheap scotch bright. There's a lot of the clear coat actually flaking on this corner right here. Let's try to smooth it down some. Probably should have blowed it all off first, huh? Instead of just rubbing it around.
I ain't gonna do that and the paint don't look too bad no more, does it? I'm sure once this paint thinner dries, it'll be nice and hazy. So we're gonna start with that tractor, truck, and implement exterior, exterior oil-based enamel matte black from the good old tractor supply. And I don't even think, I think I'm just gonna paint right out of the can since we're using a brush. I'm gonna attempt not to make a huge mess. We went with the old cheapo brush. I'm gonna throw some gloves on at least. Now, the key to painting any vehicle is to have a really good $1.97 brush from Tractor Supply and a good old thick can of black tractor implement paint. This don't even seem right. <laughs> I feel like I, I should not be doing this, but we're gonna do it. I should have put some paper down here, huh? Let's, uh, let me get off my butt. That stool is, it makes me wanna sit down when I work. All this stuff is thick. There we go. This don't even feel right, guys. I hope I don't drop this paint. And all the research I've done, it says that you want to leave the paint strokes and stuff like that in it. Like you don't want, you don't want this to be like self-leveling and all that other stuff. This paint goes a long way. It doesn't even look like I've used any paint. And it's on here thick too. I'm not barely coating it. I mean, I'm, I'm lathering this stuff on here. It's killing me not to have it in one direction though. I know I'm going to be doing a majority of the sanding up in here, so I want to make sure at least those spots are really thick. Because when you do the fake patina, the areas you sand are going to be areas that the sun naturally kind of removes the paint over the time, over the years, you know? So I know that I'm going to be doing a lot of sanding on this hump and up on the top and maybe around the hinges. So I'm going to make sure it's coated good there. All right, we 
Is there any places I've missed? Yeah. I'll give y'all a close up of it really quick. I don't know how easy it's gonna be to tell on camera, but there is lots. Yeah, you can see that. And the light hits it. See the streaks? So according to the old interweb, that's what we need. And I know these lights are driving y'all crazy. I, don't, I bought the same bulbs that are in all of my other lights. And these are the only ones that do it on camera, and I don't know why. But I'll, I'll replace those. Check this out. Look how textured this actually is. From a distance, it don't look bad. All right, so now we're just gonna let her dry. It took this black forever to dry. It is the next morning. I wanted to put that red oxide on so much last night. Let me turn this off. I actually come out here and put this heater on there late last night because I, I just didn't think it was gonna be dry enough this morning, but it, it's dry now. Last night I come out here late several times and it was really tacky. I was really hoping I could spray first thing today and have that red oxide on here, but I guess that ain't gonna have it worked out. Oh well, it's early enough. I think we can go ahead and roll the red oxide primer on this morning. I got me a little roller set up over here. We'll fill her up and get her rolled on really quick. Go ahead and throw the heater right back on it. Maybe that red oxide will dry a little bit quicker and we can go ahead and spray by this afternoon. Man, it's taking that long to do this one fender. Whenever it's time to do this whole truck, it's gonna take a minute. <laughs> There's a few little high spots like right here and right here, but they're not, I don't know if I should hit those with like a scotch brush or anything. I mean, it's not horrible, but you can see all the textured lines from the paintbrush in the camera. There you go, okay. And apparently, according to the old interweb, that's what we're supposed to do. So now we're gonna roll on. That's according to, one of my favorite YouTubers, Oh Puddin's Fab Shop. I'm kind of going by the way he did his little Datsun last year, or I guess it was this year. He painted on the first coat, and then he rolled on the next coat. So that's what we're finna do now. We're gonna mix up some, you can't even see nothing there, can you? We're gonna mix up a little concoction. Well, really, we don't have to mix it because we're not gonna spray it, we're just gonna Pour it in this little cup here. And we got these little bitty tiny rollers, little four and a half inch rollers. And we're gonna roll it on. And they're really thick too, so they're gonna absorb a lot of that primer and probably waste a whole bunch of it. Let's get our sugar up. That's old school right there. Yeah, ain't nothing to it but to do it. You don't see that color much anymore.
This roller is definitely sucking up a lot of this paint. There's a glob right there. I want these coats to be as, as thick as possible because when we start sanding, if the coats are really thin, it's gonna be really easy to burn through them. And you don't wanna burn all the way through them. Like, you wanna be able to kind of control your sanding areas whenever we start doing the old fake patina. I'm gonna throw the old heater back on her and see how long she takes to dry up. Try to get it where it hits it at an angle. Cause the temperature in here is 68 degrees right now with 61% humidity. So this is gonna take a while. All right guys, welcome back to day three on how long does it take to paint one freaking Nissan Fender. It's finally dry. This is literally Sunday morning. I painted the black coat on with you guys Friday evening and now here we are Sunday morning. I did sneak out here a while ago and hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. I'll give you an up close shot in just a minute, but it, it, it was just killing me. There was so much texture and so many high spots and you can still clearly feel it. You can clearly see it, but we're gonna wipe it down. Apparently this is what it's supposed to look like, which is really just, it kind of blows my mind. I really hope it doesn't turn out horrible. But like I said, we can always do this over again. We're probably gonna swap these fenders out anyway. So this is a good trial run on how to learn how to do it. I've double checked, triple checked online and Apparently this is what you want. You want the roller marks. You want the the rough look on this primer so that when you sand it, it gives a nice inconsistency whenever we're cutting through the uh, turquoise. And speaking of the turquoise, I bought a gun yesterday, not a, a gun gun, but a spray gun. And we're gonna put it together real quick, get everything set up. It got really cold here last night and I've got the heaters going so you can probably hear them. I'm gonna run the heaters long enough to kind of get the temperature back up in here. So I, I think it's gotta be pretty warm in here or not warm, but it's gotta be, it can't be freezing when we spray this paint, I'm pretty sure. So let's go over here, let's put this gun together. I'll show you what we're gonna go with, get it set up and get to spray this turquoise, see how it looks. So I, I already had a spray gun and it, I think it's actually an older Harbor Freight gun. This is what I had. And I got it down yesterday. I was gonna clean it up and use it. And I opened it up and noticed that it was completely full of white paint. And I tried to remember the last time I painted with this gun. And believe it or not, the last time I painted with this gun, I painted a Ranger bass boat seven years ago. And apparently I didn't clean out the insides and it took me forever to get it clean. And I got kind of worried that it was gonna mess up. I've only got a sample of this turquoise to do this fender. I didn't want any mess ups because of me or the gun. So I went to Harbor Freight. They got a sale going on right now with basically the same gun for 20 bucks. So it was worth it for me to just go grab a new gun for 20 bucks and this is it. All we gotta do is put it together. It comes with its own regulator, a little tool kit. And it's a nice pretty purple color. And I think it's basically the same gun. Yeah, basically you can adjust the air pressure here, but you really don't have to use this. You just leave this wide open because we're gonna have an air regulator on it. And I did buy a little cheap filter while I was there to put in line. 
So now we'll just put this bad boy together real quick and get to spraying. I'm probably gonna have to steal my nipple here because I don't think I have any more of those nipples. All right, I think I got her spraying how I want it. So I'm gonna wipe the fender down really quick. We're gonna put what little bit of paint we've got in this gun and I really hope it's enough to cover this fender. And we're gonna get to spray in this final coat, see how she turns out. There's my color. Tropical turquoise. And I do not have much paint at all. Let's hope she sprays good. Well, how long do you think it takes to paint one fender on a truck? For me, this is Monday afternoon, just got home from work and it's finally dry. I started this with the black coat in this video on Friday. So we're finally to the point where we can do some sanding. I do have to say, I'm not extremely happy with this for a couple of things. Let me show you up close. So first of all, I know they're supposed to be texture. That was the whole reason, if I can get it to focus, let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. So that was the whole reason we did the whole process, but this has turned out, it's hard to tell on camera, but this has turned out more like a, almost like a bed liner texture to it. It looks so much different in the videos I've seen online, and I've done the exact same steps and I double checked yesterday because I thought, well, heck, maybe they sanded the primer before, but they didn't. They wanted the texture, so that's why they used the roller. And another thing, and I'm, this is my main concern. You see this color. Let me get down here so you guys can actually see it. This is not exactly the color that I was going for. I'm going to put the swatch on the screen right now. So you can see it side by side. I'll put it right here next to it. The, this is the same paint coat and it's clearly different. I'm gonna have to call back up there or maybe show them something. There, this is way less green. You know, the Tropical tur Turquoise is a GM, it's a paint code. So it wasn't like we were coming up with a color. I mean, this that color has been used on several hot rods throughout the years. And this is just not it. This is not that same color. This is way more blue. 
I don't know if the, it being next to the red is just kind of throwing me off or what, but I'm not, I'm not thrilled with it. I so. plan on, we're gonna lightly wet sand this whole fender down, just, you know, not heavy. Uh, we'll see how far we can get to see if it, we get it to flatten out any. It, it, it's such a weird texture. Now, it, it is cool that it's unified. It's not like random texture. I mean, it is 100% unified. If we did the whole truck like this, it would look weird. It'd be definitely different, but I, it wouldn't look blotchy. I mean, it looks pretty even to be what it is. So maybe when we wet sand it, we can knock it down a little bit and see. I'm going to grab some sandpaper and a sponge and we're just gonna start maybe doing the patina. I'm gonna do a little bit here. I did piddle on uh, Photoshop a little bit and I come up with this design. This is just not these wheels, by the way. This, that's definitely not the look I'm going for, but this is more along the lines of how I wanted the truck to turn out body-wise. This color that you see here is more of the, the turquoise, you know, the, the tropical turquoise that I was going for. And this is clearly different. So. I want to try to achieve the patina look anyway. I mean, if it don't work out, at least we didn't paint the whole truck. If I don't like it, I can always sand this back down. Or like I said at the beginning of the video, I may end up putting four wheel drive fenders on this truck in the future anyway. So I don't know. All we can do is practice on this and it looks like I just pushed back the paint right there. How the heck does that even happen? I just did that with my hand. Is this still not all the way dry or set? That's weird. Look what I just did. Can you guys see that? How does that even happen? My hand was just here and it pushed the paint back. This has clearly been sitting for two days and I had a heater on it all day yesterday. What the frick? So I guess that's where we're gonna start with the patina sanding. I don't guess we got a choice. This area will get the patina, huh? <laughs> All right, y'all be sure to grab your cleanest kitty litter bucket full of water here. I just put some clean, warm water in it. Got a rag. I'm gonna go pre-wet this fender. I can't believe that slid back. And what I'm looking at is the black, and that was the first coat. So I'm wondering if the red oxide primer didn't stick very well it's interesting interesting all right we're going to start off with i'm just using this scotch bride as kind of a a sponge so it's a little softer but i'm starting with 400 grit i'm gonna wet it I don't know guys, this is not turning out right. Let me go with a lighter. All right, I changed it to 800. Didn't want it that wide right there.
There's some black coming through there. A little bit more. You can see where I'm putting my hand up here too. It's just, this top is not done right. Now don't get into the black much. I mean, I got into it there, but Really not getting into it here. Still no black. There's a little bit. There's a little bit of black coming through. I think I'm stopping right there. We're gonna clean the fender up, let it dry, and then look back at it. Let me clean my hands and I'll show you guys up close. Let me just wipe it down. All right guys, so I need honest opinions. What do you think? I've let it dry. It's kind of flattened out some now that it's dry. You can kind of see how it looks. It looks pretty natural. This is my first attempt at this and that's why we're doing it to this one fender. Like I said, if we don't like it, we can change it. We're not gonna do the whole truck right off the bat because I wanted to learn how to do this. Let me show you up close now that it's dry. And I want some honest opinions from you guys. The, the key is just to make it look natural. And if you get close, it's hard to tell on camera but you can see, there you go. You can see how it looks. I mean, it, it, to me, this looks natural. This looks like the paint has weathered. You can see where it's breaking down, but the paint is still slick. So when we matte gloss it, you know, it's not like we're gonna be flaking paint or anything like that. And it just looks like it's cut down through the primer into a base coat there. I'm not thrilled with this area here because I don't really think that looks too natural. And it may need, this may need to be, where am I at? This may need to be a little bit bigger there. But if you picture it, it's hard to tell with this blue because it sticks out on camera really bad compared to this red on the truck. I think if the whole truck was the same color and we had it naturally looking like under the door handle, around the bottom of the window, the most of the roof would be showing red in the black or the primer in the black. And then when we get back here to the bed, we would do around the top of the tire, maybe a bad spot here. And then most of the cap would be, you know, weathered or whatever. But I need some honest opinions on what you guys think. And you got to picture it with some white steelies, white wall tires, big fat white walls, and this thing lowered to the ground. I think it would be pretty cool. I just don't know about the color. I don't think the color was supposed to turn out that way. Let me put you back on the stand. I don't think that the, like I said earlier, I think this turquoise is a shade off and I'm not sure why because it's a paint code that I give them, but you can tell if you compare it to that little swatch or whatever you want to call it that I got off Google, the one on Google is much greener. There's a, to me, there's a, there's a good difference in the colors. This doesn't have as much green but it doesn't look bad. I believe if the whole truck looked like this, we matte finish it, you know, a matte gloss so it's not shiny. I, I think we can make it look real, like make it look, you know, not real for a show truck. So if this thing's slammed and we got an air ride on it, the windows are tinted, 
we do something with the front end, I'm thinking about maybe putting a Toyota bumper on the front end and you know, it'll wrap around the sides a little bit. I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave me some honest comments. This will be the first video in this series. Even though we technically didn't do anything but this one fender this week, I've been working on it for four days. I wanted to get something out there so I can get some advice or tips from you guys. If you've done this before, you see me doing something wrong, let me know in the comments. I welcome all of the comments. I read them all and I'll get back with you. Maybe we can figure out, you know, if I need to do something different to achieve the look I'm going for. There's a certain look I'm going for. I think I'm close. I don't think I've hit it yet, but I think I'm pretty close to the look I'm going for. And yeah, so next week we're gonna move on. We're just gonna leave this fender like this for a while. We're waiting on the motor to come back. It's not here yet. So we're gonna go ahead and take the bed off. I'm gonna roll this thing out of the shop this week and we're gonna try to pressure wash everything. I've gotta get my transmission hanging so that I can move it. Right now I've just got it on a transmission jack kind of holding it in place, but I'll get it mounted up so that we can roll this truck outside, pressure wash it. I'm gonna take the tractor, I'm gonna take the bed off and just it, hopefully the motor will be back and we can move into rebuilding that motor. There's a lot of cool things I wanna to do to that motor before we drop it in. And I also want to attempt to clean up this firewall, paint the firewall, delete all those stupid vacuum lines that are everywhere. And yeah, so one step at a time, I guess. I've also got to do some work on the chicken coop. I might include that. I'm building a deck behind it to hold. I'm converting a deer feeder into a chicken feeder. So it's going to be like an automatic thing. I figured since I'm working on it, like I told you last week, whatever I'm working on, I'm going to start filming. If you're interested to hang out and watch, I appreciate it. We're going to just kind of bounce around. We're going to let this fender sit for a while. I think I need to look at it every day when I come home from work for a while before we paint the whole truck because I need to know that this is the look I'm going for. I want it to look old. I want it to look weathered. We're close. We're really close. I'm really upset that this looks more like a freaking Smurf blue than it does turquoise. To me, anyway, it looks much different to me than what I pictured. So we might have to revisit the paint or maybe even do the other fender. Go get another thing mixed up. And if they match, then we, you know, we'll be good. But if they don't match, we'll know something was off with a tint on this paint. So. Anyway, I'm gonna quit rambling. I appreciate you guys watching, hanging out with me while I work on this truck and try to figure out this patina stuff. And we're gonna move on. We're just gonna keep working on this truck, doing other projects. I'm gonna try to upload every week like I've been doing for a while. It's just gonna be whatever I'm working on. We're gonna hang out. We might go pick some parts off another parts truck. I might tell you guys want me to do that. And we'll just start piling stuff in this garage until we got everything here to do a C-notch four link I want to do a bunch of stuff I've never done. So if you, if you missed last week's video, I went in depth over everything we're going to be doing to this and the past trucks I've had and how I kind of got to where I'm at. So if you missed it, go watch it. I'll link it right here maybe. And I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I'll catch you next Thursday at 2, maybe. I don't know. I might need to change my schedule. But I'll catch you next week. Peace.